In this video, I'm not going to put any universities in joint positions and certainly no one is going to be joint first. There's only room for one top university in London. Let's get started. So in this video, I'll be looking at what I believe are the top 10 universities in London and list them in order from 10th to 1st. Now, how did I come up with this ranking? Well, there's a few different inputs I've used. This includes the reputation, both at a national and international level, my professional experience on what the demand for students from these universities are, the student satisfaction from people I know that have actually graduated from these universities, the grades required for most courses, what the university is specialised in and how good they are at it, the choice of courses they offer, research quality, and finally, social life. So starting at number 10 in the list of top universities in London, I've got Birkbeck University. Now, if you're unsure where Birkbeck is located, I don't blame you. It's not really an undergrad focused university. It focuses a lot more on postgraduate level studies. But it's located right in the middle of London, opposite UCL, actually in Bloomsbury. Now you might be thinking that's a great location for the social life of Birkbeck University students but like I said this university focuses on postgraduate studies and more specifically full-time working postgrads. The social scene won't really be a big part for the students at university. Now in my opinion this university is definitely a respected university for what it offers postgraduate education for working professionals. You're not going to be seeing this university at the top of major rankings since they actually withdrew from a lot of the ranking tables primarily because they use a combination of professional experience as well as formal grades for their entry requirements. But for number 10 in the top London universities, I'm happy with this position. It's not a university for everyone, but for what it offers, it does extremely well and has a great reputation for doing it. At number nine, we've got Brunel University. Now I'm going to say something about this university shortly, which many people might not know about, which could massively enhance the demand for this university in the coming years. But to begin with, when it comes to Brunel University, if you don't know where Birkbeck is, you probably won't know where Brunel is until you actually apply there. Now, when you think of London universities, you're gonna be thinking a lot about the London social life. And at Brunel, you're not really anywhere near central London. If you're living on campus, it's going to be a very tough time to get back late at night, especially after midnight, with it being so far away from central London. The average entry grades, I won't say they're easy, but they're pretty average requirements to get into most of the courses. And let's be real, I don't think I've ever seen anyone put Brunel University as their dream university. However, something I do want to say, which most people aren't aware of Brunel, is that it's going to start to offer medicine as one of its courses. Now, it's already started to offer these only for international students currently with an entry requirement of AAB, which is pretty attainable. They're currently reviewing entry for UK students and I'm sure that'll happen very, very soon. And with that, you'll see Brunel have a massive spike in demand and also push its average entry grades up significantly as a majority of medicine students apply with three A's as a minimum. Now there's a bit of cheating for number eight where we have Royal Holloway. Now originally when I set my criteria of which universities I'd include in the top 10 London unis, I was only going to select universities within the M25. But I saw that Royal Holloway is actually outside the M25, but I'm still going to include this and keep this at number eight since it's a part of the University of London. Now this is a great uni for a different London vibe. Like I said, it's located just outside Greater London. It has a really beautiful campus. Now in terms of target universities for companies, usually it's in the third tier of groups for universities. And so for that reason, I'm not going to be putting it a lot higher. Really, this is a good uni. You're going to have a great time going here. And I've known a lot of my friends who graduated from Royal Holloway and have really positive things to say about the teaching and the close knit social life the university has. Now I've got a section of the ranking which was very tough coming up. And like I said, I don't do joint positions. And so number seven, six and five for very close decisions. But I'll explain why I made my choices. So at number seven, I've placed SOAS University. Now whether you're studying economics, history or any other subject, you will have a very unique insight into the developing world and how it works, which you don't get at any other place. People from here usually end up working in a lot of public institutions or in the charity sector, basically working for the good of mankind. And the roles tend to be very focused, which there's nothing bad about that, but it's really unfortunate that these great learnings from the uni aren't seen in more diverse industries because I know they'll bring a lot of fresh ideas 
to those places. But choosing to attend SOAS, you're probably going to be someone who's very passionate about a specific cause that you'll feel strongly about. And that's a great thing about this university is that you're going to find a massive group of friends who will share the same ideas and beliefs as you very early on in your university journey. And for that, the social life is a massive plus point for SOAS University. So for that number six, I put City University. Again, let me reiterate numbers five, six, and seven, very tight. And the reason I put City University here is because there's quite a few well-respected schools within the university. Now, of course, SOAS's expertise on the developing world politics and culture is unique, but at City, you firstly got the Bayes Business School, and this is a well-respected school in the financial industry at an international level and offers very unique degrees. And secondly, you might not know this, but its journalism school is one of the best in the country, if not the best, often called the Oxbridge of journalism. Now compared to SOAS, I'd say SOAS students generally have a better student satisfaction, but overall using reputation, entry requirements, specializations, people and industry as measures, I'll put City above SOAS. Next is Queen Mary University at number five. And Queen Mary is not a number five by a clear margin. It was tough to separate Queen Mary from the previous universities, but again, when it comes to specializations, law, English, politics, and of course medicine, are really well-respected schools at Queen Mary University. Look, I get it, the location of Queen Mary Look, it's in the most deprived borough of London. Nobody goes to that area to hang out. I also remember my friend's wheel got stolen off his bicycle, even though it was locked right outside Bethlehem Green Station. But hey, you got two Nandos within 10 minutes walking distance of each other. So that's a positive. But all jokes aside, at the end of the day, there is a lot of respect for Queen Mary graduates. They enter diverse fields in great jobs and many international students come to Queen Mary for the postgrad, showing the international reputation that it has. Next, in fourth place, we've got King's College University. Now, I don't think anyone's going to disagree with this ranking position, especially since you can guess which unis are left to come. Now, King's College is comfortably above the London University that I've mentioned so far, but not close enough to the unis above it to consider if it can be higher in the rankings. Now, this is one of the oldest universities in the country and reputation-wise, nationally and internationally, it's superb. People happily have this as a first choice university. And with the creation of this business school around 10 years ago, it now offers a full suite of subjects. The university as a whole, its, its architecture is amazing and it's close to everything in London. The research quality is great. It was leading the way in assisting the UK government during COVID policies. And lastly, a lot of companies heavily advertise themselves at King's through society sponsorships and general recruiting events, showing the demand and respect that companies have for King's College graduates. So I don't really have much else to say about King's and why it's in this position. As I said, it's comfortably above the unis mentioned so far, but I wouldn't say it's pushing above fourth place when looking at the top universities in London. Next, and um, for the remaining three, I've thought about this very carefully and I'll start with third place and that is UCL. Now, a lot of international rankings for a few years have had UCL above LSE and obviously I haven't mentioned LSE or Imperial yet, meaning I've put them higher in the rankings. But in terms of what they offer, UCL no doubt offers more varied courses than LSE or Imperial and the London social life at UCL is also miles better than the social life at the remaining top two universities. But I feel the remaining London universities on my list have an edge at the international level. Like I said, UCL has really pushed itself in the international rankings in the past couple of years, but it's just that, like that, that X factor isn't there yet. I'd probably wait maybe two to three years more to ever consider it being above LSE or Imperial University. Okay, so I'm going to mention second place and first place for the top universities in London together, since I'm going to be comparing them side by side. And that is obviously LSE, and Imperial. As a starting point, what sets these universities apart from other London universities is if you attend Imperial or LSE, there'll never be any other university in the country apart from perhaps Oxbridge, where you'd feel that, oh, it would have been a little better if I attended University X or University Y. You're going to these universities to work hard and get a top job after it. It's no doubt that's the main aim of the students who attend these universities. Get that degree and get that high paying job after it. So 
Where am I placing these unis on the ranking? Well, LSE is placed at number two and Imperial at number one. Look, I could have taken the easy way out and just put them joint first, but that's not what I'm about. Okay, so let's look at this in a little more detail. Both internationally, you're going to get that name recognition and both unis specialize in either social sciences or STEM. And so you'll never find a person normally applying to both of these universities. Internationally, both these universities are in the top 10 in what they offer. And honestly, in a lot of the inputs that I use to decide the top universities in London, these guys were neck and neck. And there's no point in dissecting the inputs for these two London unis since they were either almost the same or just very different and not a fair comparison. But Imperial edges LSE. Now firstly, Imperial, as much as a STEM focused university that it is, it also has a business school and it's a really good business school at that, with it in the top 10 in various international rankings. But more importantly, the future is going to be very tech based, focusing on things such as robotics, fintech and artificial intelligence. And so the demand for students who have that knowledge and are immersed in that environment during the university studies will be very, very high in the coming years. But look, at the end of the day, students at both universities are highly capable at what they do. And I strongly believe that if the LSE economic students were forced to study science and Imperial engineering students were forced to study economics, they'd excel in those subjects as well. But that is my opinion of the top universities in London. I definitely want to hear what your thoughts are. If you agree or disagree, put them in the comment section below. And if you want to see my review of the latest UK university rankings, go check out the video next to me and I'll see you all in the next video.